Shyamji Krishna Varma, the 4th of October 1857 to the 30th of March 1930, was an Indian revolutionary fighter, an Indian patriot, lawyer and journalist who founded the Indian Home Rule Society, India House and the Indian Sociologist in London. A graduate of Balliol College, Krishna Varma was a noted scholar in Sanskrit and other Indian languages. He pursued a brief legal career in India and served as the divan of a number of Indian princely states in India. He had, however, differences with Crown Authority, was dismissed following a supposed conspiracy of local British officials at Junagadh and chose to return to England. An admirer of Dayanand Saraswati's approach of cultural nationalism, and of Herbert Spencer, Krishna Varma believed in Spencer's dictum, "...resistance to aggression is not simply justified, but imperative." In 1905 he founded the India House and the Indian Sociologist, which rapidly developed as an organised meeting point for radical nationalists among Indian students in Britain at the time and one of the most prominent centres for revolutionary Indian nationalism outside India. Krishna Varma moved to Paris in 1907, avoiding prosecution. <laughs> Early life Shyamji Krishna Varma was born on 4 October 1857 in Manvi, Kutch State now Kutch, Gujarat as Shamji, the son of Krushnata's Banashali Karsan Nakua. Nakua is the surname while Banashali is the community name, a labourer for Cotton Press Company, and Gomadabai, who died when Shyamji was only 11 years old. He was raised by his grandmother. His ancestors belonged to Bachunda 23 degrees 12 3 N 69 degrees 0 minutes 4 seconds. E, a village now in Abdasa Taluka of Kutch district. They had migrated to Manvi in search of employment and due to familial disputes. After completing secondary education in Bhuj he went to Mumbai for further education at Wilson High School. Whilst in Mumbai, he learned Sanskrit. In 1875, Shyamji got married to Banamati, a daughter of a wealthy businessman of the Bhatia community and sister of his school friend Ramdas. Then he got in touch with the nationalist Swami Dayananda Saraswati, a radical reformer and an exponent of the Vedas, who had founded the Arya Samaj. He became his disciple and was soon conducting lectures on Vedic philosophy and religion. In 1877, a public speaking tour secured him a great public recognition. He became the first non-Brahmin to receive the prestigious title of Pandit by the Pandits of Kashi in 1877. He came to the attention of Monier Williams, an Oxford professor of Sanskrit who offered Shyamji a job as his assistant. Later in 1905, Shyamji attended the United Congress of Democrats held at Holborn Town Hall as a delegate of the India Home Rule Society. His resolution on India received an enthusiastic ovation from the entire conference. Shyamji's activities in England aroused the concern of the British government, he was disbarred from Inner Temple and removed from the membership list on 30 April 1909 for writing anti-British articles in the Indian Sociologist. Most of the British press were anti-Shyamji and carried outrageous allegations against him and his newspaper. He defended them boldly. The Times referred to him as the "...notorious Krishnavarma." Many newspapers criticised the British progressives who supported Shyamji and his view. His movements were closely watched by British secret services, so he decided to shift his headquarters to Paris, leaving India House in charge of Veer Savarkar. Shyamji left Britain secretly before the government tried to arrest him. <laughs> Paris and Geneva He arrived in Paris in early 1907 to continue his work. The British government tried to have him extradited from France without success as he gained the support of many top French politicians. Shyamji's name was dragged into the sensational trial of Mr Merlin, an Englishman, at Bow Street Magistrates Court, for writing an article in Liberators published by Shyamji's friend, Mr James. Shyamji's work in Paris helped gain support for Indian independence from European countries. He agitated for the release of Savarkar and acquired great support all over Europe and Russia. Guy Aldred wrote an article in the Daily Herald under the heading of Savarkar the Hindu Patriot whose sentences expire on 24 December 1960, helping create support in England, too. In 1914 his presence became an embarrassment as French politicians had invited King George V to Paris to set a final seal on the Entente Cordiale. 
Xiamji foresaw this and shifted his headquarters to Geneva. Here the Swiss government imposed political restrictions during the entire period of World War I. He kept in touch with his contacts, but he could not support them directly. He spent time with Dr. Brees, president of the pro-India committee in Geneva, whom he later discovered was a paid secret agent of the British government. Topic: <laughs> Post-World War I. He offered a sum of 10,000 francs to the League of Nations to endow a lectureship to be called the President Woodrow Wilson Lectureship for the Discourse on the Best Means of Acquiring and Safeguarding National Independence Consistently with Freedom, Justice, and the Right of Asylum Accorded to Political Refugees. It is said that the League rejected his offer due to political pressure from British government. A similar offer was made to the Swiss government which was also turned down. He offered another lectureship at the banquet given by Press Association of Geneva where 250 journalists and celebrities, including the presidents of Swiss Federation and the League of Nations. Shyamji's offer was applauded on the spot but nothing came of it. Shyamji was disappointed with the response and he published all his abortive correspondence on this matter in the next issue of The Sociologist appearing in December 1920, after a lapse of almost six years. Death and commemoration He published two more issues of Indian Sociologist in August and September 1922, before ill health prevented him continuing. He died in hospital at 11.30 p.m. on 30 March 1930 leaving his wife, Bhanamati Krishnavarma. News of his death was suppressed by the British government in India. Nevertheless, tributes were paid to him by Bhagat Singh and other inmates in Lahore jail where they were undergoing a long-term drawn-out trial. Maratha, an English daily newspaper started by Bal Gangadhar Tilak paid tribute to him. He had made prepaid arrangements with the local government of Geneva and St. George Cemetery to preserve his and his wife's ashes at the cemetery for 100 years and to send their urns to India whenever it became independent during that period. Requested by Paris-based scholar Dr. Prithwindra Mukherjee, the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi agreed to repatriate the ashes. Finally on the 22nd of August 2003, the urns of ashes of Shyamji and his wife Bonamati were handed over to then Chief Minister of Gujarat State Narendra Modi by the Ville de Genève and the Swiss government 55 years after Indian independence. They were brought to Mumbai and after a long procession throughout Gujarat, they reached Manvi, his birthplace. A memorial called Kranti Tirth dedicated to him was built and inaugurated in 2010 near Manvi. Spread over 52 acres, the memorial complex houses a replica of India House building at Highgate along with statues of Shyamji Krishna Varma and his wife. Urns containing Krishna Verma's ashes, those of his wife, and a gallery dedicated to earlier activists of Indian independence movement is housed within the memorial. Krishna Verma was disbarred from the inner temple in 1909. This decision was revisited in 2015, and a unanimous decision taken to posthumously reinstated him. In the 1970s, a new town developed in his native state of Kutch, was named after him as Shyamji Krishna Varmanagar in his memory and honor. India Post released postal stamps and first day cover commemorating him. Kutch University was renamed after him. <laughs>